Chapter 6, Section 4, Rhombuses, Rectangles, and Squares. A rhombus, rectangle, and square are all parallelograms. So it's all a quadrilateral um, that is a parallelogram. But we're going to be more specific than just a parallelogram. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. And a square is going to be a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. So some corollaries to what we just said is a quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides. A quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four right angles. And then a quadrilateral is a square if and only if, and I'm going to say it is a rhombus and a rectangle. That means a quadrilateral is a square if and only if it has four congruent sides and four right angles. But if a shape has four congruent sides, it's a rhombus. And if a shape has four right angles, it's a rectangle. This example says, decide whether the statement is always, sometimes, or never true. A says a rectangle is a square. To be a rectangle, a shape has to have four right angles. To be a square, a shape has to have four right angles and four congruent sides. So for part A, a rectangle is a square, that is going to sometimes be true. To be a rectangle, a shape just has to have four right angles. To be a square, it has to have both four right angles and four congruent sides, which is going to be sometimes true for a rectangle. B says a square is a rhombus. To be a square, remember the definition of a square says that it has to have four congruent sides. A rhombus also has to have four congruent sides. So for part B, this is always going to be true. A square is always a rhombus. A says, is the statement, a rectangle is a parallelogram, always, sometimes, or never true. A rectangle is always going to be a parallelogram because the opposite angles of a rectangle are always going to be congruent because all of the angles of a rectangle are right angles. Number two says ABCD is a rectangle and the measure of angle B equals 8x plus 26. What is the value of x? We know that for a shape to be a rectangle it has to have four, or four um, right angles. So if the measure of angle B equals 8x plus 26, we know that that has to equal 90. So I can set 8x plus 26 equal to 90 I can sub subtract 26 from both sides and I get 8x equals 64. When I divide both sides by 8, I find that x equals 8. Some theorems that we need to talk about. Say, the first one says a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. So the diagonals of a rhombus are going to form four right angles. A parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So to be a rhombus, the diagonals are going to have to cut the two angles that they're connecting into two congruent uh, parts. The next one says a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So to be a rectangle, the diagonals of uh, the parallelogram have to be equal to each other. This example says QRST is a square. What else do you know about QRST? Well, if QRST is a square, that means that um, everything about the, a rhombus will be true for this shape and everything about a rectangle will be true for this shape. So because QRST is a square, we can say, first of all, that all of the sides are going to be congruent or equal. So QR equals RS equals ST equals QT. That just says that the sides are equal. We can also say that the opposite sides are parallel. So QR is parallel to TS and QT is parallel to RS. What else we know is that all of these angles are 90 degrees. So angle Q, angle R, angle S, and angle T are all equal and they're all equal to 90 degrees. That's all I can say about the sides and the angles of the square. However, the, we can also say something about the diagonals of the square. We can say that 
the diagonals QS and RT are equal. We can also say that they bisect each other, and something that's not written down but we can also say is that they are perpendicular to each other because we just said that the, bi the, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So QS equals RT, and they are going to be the perpendicular bisectors of each other. This example says that EF GH is a rectangle, K is the midpoint of FH, if EG equals 8Z minus 16, what is EK and what is GK? Um, remember because a rectangle is a parallelogram, everything we've learned about parallelograms so far is going to be true for a rectangle. I've gone ahead and I've drawn myself a picture. I've gone ahead and labeled my vertices drawn in the diagonals, and put, it says that K is the midpoint of FH. So I've labeled the point where the two meet um, K. Remember the definition of a parallelogram said that the, that the diagonals bisect each other. If K is the midpoint of FH, that also means K is going to be the midpoint of EG. So if we're given that EG equals 8Z minus 16, we know that EK is going to be half of that. Half of 8Z minus 16 is 4Z minus 8. And KG is also going to be half of 8Z minus 16 or the same as EK. Either way, we get that KG or GK is also 4Z minus 8. The next example says in uh, parallelogram ABCD, the diagonals meet at point E. AE equals BE, which equals 6. Is ABCD a rectangle? Explain. Go ahead and label what we know. We know that AE and BE are both 6. Remember, if this is a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. So if AE is 6, that means that EC is 6. And if BE is 6, that means that DE is also 6. Because I can label each part of these diagonals, I know that the whole diagonal AC is 12 and the whole diagonal BD is 12. Remember we said that the, the diagonals of a rectangle have to be equal or congruent. Well, the diagonals of this parallelogram, AC and BD, both measure 12, so they are congruent. Because of this, I can say ABCD is a rectangle because the diagonals are congruent. They both measure 12. This next example, first of all, I want to point out that in part A and part B, we're talking about the same um, quilt shaped uh, quilt piece. So A says you cut out a parallelogram shaped quilt piece and measure the diagonals to be congruent. What is the shape? The shape that we can say that the diagonals are congruent is um, a rectangle. So for part A, we know that this shape is a rectangle. Remember in part B, we're talking about the same piece that we were talking about in part A. We know it's a rectangle, but then it gives us more information. It says the, an angle formed by the, by the diagonals of the quilt pieces measure, uh, measures 90 degrees is the shape of square. So we know we have a rectangle. We know that a rectangle can be a square, but for a rectangle to be a square, it also has to be a rhombus. This says an angle formed by the diagonals of a quilt piece measures 90 degrees. We know that when the diagonals um, are perpendicular or form 90 degree angles, it is a rhombus. So from part A, we know it's a rectangle. Part B tells us it's a, it's a rhombus. Because this is both a rectangle and a rhombus, we can say that yes, it is a square. This next example says that in parallelogram RSTV, the diagonals form a pair of congruent angles at each vertex. What kind of figure is RSTU? That should say RSTV. That's a typo there. So it should say what kind of figure is RSTV. Um, I'm not sure why they changed the V to a U. If um, the diagonals are pairing forming a pair of congruent angles at each vertex, then we know that um, the diagonal is bisecting two sets of, of angles. 
which tells us that this shape would be a rhombus. Again, that should say what kind of figure is RSTV. It was just a typo.